where your wisdom truth is found. We celebrate each new generation as it pursues the discoveries of truth. As we gather today to honor those who have finished a course of study in their pursuit for truth, we ask your blessing on those about to graduate, their parents, friends, teachers, and fellow classmates. Creator of the universe, we thank you for parents and their patience, for teachers and their eagerness to help explore the mysteries of life, for friends for their dedication and concern for us, and classmates for their tolerance of each day's frustrations and joys. But most of all, we celebrate this graduating class and their perseverance of study, curiosity, imagination, and patience enough to work and doubt and courage to hold on and face the challenges before them. Amen. Good morning to you all. Despite its best efforts, my voice tried to skip graduation this morning. Uh, so I am here in full body and soul. My voice is here in soul, but not quite in full body. It is my distinct pleasure to welcome you to Lancaster Country Day School's 86 of the graduation exercises. For the first time in recent memory, graduation is being held on Saturday. It seems only fitting, after all, after such a horrendous winter that even graduation should be effective. It really has been quite a year for weather. First there was the snow and the ice, and the ice and the snow, and the snow and the ice. Then came the torrential rains, and now the heat. It's almost as if we're being reminded not to take our natural world for granted. After all, in an age of technology, most of us are far removed from a society in which there was a strong attachment to the land, and in which people never took the weather for granted. So we're gathered here this Saturday morning to honor and celebrate 28 seniors. There are, of course, countless cliches about the significance of graduation. But instead of uttering those cliches and other platitudes this morning, I'd like to read in part a short but poignant letter which was written by a grandfather to his grandson on the event of graduation. The letter reads in part, Graduation just comes along. Why all the fuss, I asked when it came to me. Everyone gets through somehow. But it's not so. Everyone doesn't. And it's more than that. It's an event. Events are important in life. This one demonstrates to you that you have succeeded, that you are capable of achieving your goals. You know now that you can pull your weight in life, that you can be one of those whose lives and actions enrich the world around you, perhaps the world at large. May your goals be ever expanded. Pretty much, perhaps, sure. But to me, your graduation and your successes and achievements bring great joy. Congratulations. I offer, too, my heartiest congratulations to the 28 members of the senior class. It's been my custom at graduation to try to characterize the senior class with a generalization or two. But somehow, with this class, it seems very hard, if not impossible, to make meaningful generalizations about 28 strong individuals. Instead, let me quote Marion Wright Edelman, who counseled us when she wrote, You were born God's original. Try not to become someone's copy. Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 1994 contains 28 originals. It is perhaps more fitting to try to highlight some of the things that this class has done the senior year. In my mind, they have provided very strong senior leadership in many areas of school life. They have spearheaded the adoption of an honor code in the after school uh, that will go into effect next fall. They have achieved significantly academically in the arts, in music, and in drama. A small but critical group of seniors has led LCDS to two side championships in cross country and boys tennis and notable success and other sports. And finally, I can't help but mention one other achievement of our senior class. They completed the yearbook 
on time. I want all of you who are seniors graduating today to know that I appreciate what you have done for this school. It's been fun seeing you grow, mature, and prosper, and I wish you very well next year. Thank you very much.
please stand and join us in singing of the school song.
year, awards are given to one or two students for academic excellence, those students with the highest averages in the class, to present the award to the 11th grade, Mr. Wolf.
student who has exerted his leadership in a quiet, modest, yet forceful manner. When his interest is piqued, he is incredibly curious and refuses to rest until his curiosity is satisfied. His flashes of insight and humor are surpassed only by his technological wizardry. And he's even succeeded, despite his lineage, John Andrew Johnson. Nancy Ahn is definitely one of the most intelligent and outstanding. 
Through her hard work and determination, Nancy has always excelled in and out of the classroom. This leads many of us to wonder why she's always worried about anything and everything. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, since all of her worrying and self-induced pressure is always paying off. It's been a very few times that Nancy's stress has gotten her sidetracked. The classic example seems to be the time that Nancy had misinterpreted the directions to my house and managed to make a tour of the amusement parks of southeastern Pennsylvania. Only Nancy could turn a quick two-minute ride on Route 30 into a round trip between Hershey Park and Dutch Wonderland. I vividly remember receiving the call from a then panic-stricken Nancy, who at the time was very fearful of a kind passerby who had pulled over in order to help her. Finally, after 90 minutes, Nancy found her way. I know Nancy will be as much of a success at Penn as she was at LCDS. And this is her piece. Peter Carlino was probably one of the most charismatic members of our class. That is why he was voted as the ambassador of our MUN delegation. At Den Haag, he proved his great oratorical and diplomatic abilities to the entire conference, leading our delegation to great success. But we had no desk to begin with. One cannot speak about Peter without mentioning his deep obsession with cleanliness and personal appearance. <laughs> day in and day out, Peter is dressed to a tee in J. Crew clothes. There is enough time for me to describe this GQ political mastermind. However, it isn't a secret to anyone that Peter will undoubtedly excel at whatever task he undertakes. Peter, good luck at Lehigh. We all know that you will be a success there. And this is his piece. Michelle Lombardo joined our class in the eighth grade. She fit in right away, and this is not surprising because Michelle has a great personality, is intelligent, and is a great athlete. Over the years, I've had the pleasure of getting to know her better. I've enjoyed our talks on the bus and on snowy car rides home. In the time that I've gotten to know her, I've learned that she is one of the most strong-willed and independent people in the world. She knows what she wants, and she isn't afraid to stand up for it. An example of this is the way she beautifully handled herself, representing our delegation during the MUN conference, representing the indigenous peoples. Michelle is a loyal friend and is always there if you need a listening ear or poignant, helpful advice. Michelle, good luck at Penn State. We will all miss you. And this is her piece. Cimarron has gone to this school longer than I have, but in the few short years that I've known him, he's proved to be quite a guy. He's best known for his humorous personality, tie-dye turbans, and his most excellent rendition of Blue Moon. All social aspects aside, Cimarron is very determined and excels in everything he does. When he decides to do something, he does not give up until it is done perfectly. His mind seems to work faster than the rest of his body, however. Whenever he tries to write, his hand cannot keep up with his thoughts, so that the final product is his handwriting. His teachers are breathing a sigh of relief now because they know that the task of deciphering his obscure scrawlings will soon be on someone else. Simran, you've been a great friend. You've helped me with my homework when I couldn't understand it and listened to me complain about my problems many times. You're a great person and I wish you luck at Princeton next year. And this is Simran's piece. of knowing Lynn Montgomery for over 10 years now, though by right, she is a life for a country day. In that time, Lynn has become a strong and caring individual who is ready and willing to stand up for what she believes. Whether she is volunteering for the American Red Cross or simply conversing with many of her boyfriend, I, I mean friends, she, she can be easily distinguished by her graceful, flowing, back to the 60s type attire. At LCDS, Lynn has earned the reputation of an excellent athlete and a great friend. Throughout the year, you may find her tearing up the hockey field, 
on the fast break in the basketball courts, or palling around with others around a roaring campfire in one of her many outward bound adventures. She will also be remembered in school for her artistic talents and her ever thought provoking questions. But among her friends, Lynn will be most missed for her charming personality and her beautiful smile. I wish you the best of luck next year at the University of Montana. Oh, and by the way, Lynn, Outward Bound is on Friday. And this is her piece. John Bingham is one of the most responsible young boys that I know. <laughs> I always noticed him spending all his time in the library and also in the nursery playing with the children. He is also an outgoing member of the chess club and the student government. John was also very active in the community. He went on many dad's book marches and spent a lot of time in the Humane League. John is a very adventurous guy. In fact, on the MUN side trip to Amsterdam, John got lost in the red light district, and to this day, nobody actually knows what really went on there. <laughs> I wrote this speech on April Fool's Day that might explain some of the characteristics that I just told about John. I asked a few people at school what John would be doing in 20 years. They said, a TV evangelist, a philosophy teacher, sitting in jail, or even better yet, following the Grateful Dead around while they are in their retirement plan. <laughs> I know wherever John ends up, he will have no problems. He is one of the most important qualities a person can have. He can make anybody smile. John has been at LCDS since nursery school, and I know that he is one student they will never forget. Good luck next year. Andy Johnson. Since I wrote this in psychology class, I feel I should at least mention, if not name, his major Freudian personality trait. Uh, this trait served Andy well in several positions he occupied for our class and our school. For example, Andy served as whip for the 1994 MUN delegation. I suppose I should also mention that because of long hours spent working over spring break in an empty school, all alone, with Miss Lochner. <laughs> Andy was a driving force behind the creation of our most punctual yearbook. And what description of Andy Johnson would be complete without mention of his hair? If you haven't yet seen it, you can see it on him this morning, or blowing in the wind on any of the mountain bike trails in Lancaster County. That's Andy. Responsible, hardworking, intelligent, with big hair. <laughs> I hope that these traits and that hair serve him well at Princeton. I wish him luck. And here's his piece. And here's his piece. Thank you, John. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm about to tell you may come as a great shock. I think you better sit down for this one. Believe it or not, Rebecca Ether actually does smile. Yes, that quiet, reserved manner is merely a facade. What few know is that Rebecca is secretly an energetic party animal. When she's not in school, you often find her cruising the beaches with her friends in Stone Harbor, having cookie batter fights with Kim at the Great American Cookie Company, or catching some rays with her brother Eric in California. This LCDS lifer has also found time to volunteer at the Humane League, study for a summer in France, and monitor the ongoing developments of the WWF. That's the World Wildlife Fund, of course. In a few months, Rebecca will depart for Gettysburg, where she will join the class of 1998. I wish her the best of luck. Here's your piece.
How can I tell you about that quirky buyer that we've all come to trust and to care for deeply? Should I say that she's been the greatest hostess in the history of Chi Chi's restaurants, not only in Lancaster, but all over the globe? Should I mention that, contrary to popular belief, she does sing and does it well enough to participate in local honors choirs, perform with the singing groups here at school, and while driving in the car, sing back up to Natalie Merchant and her favorite bands, the 10,000 Maniacs. Maybe I should mention that she's excited to be attending Penn State as an occupational therapy major. Should I add that she was the first of us to be accepted into college? Can she simply be defined by what she does? She's so much more than that. In this life, we must hold on to those people who allow us to smile again. We have all found that Courtney is one of those special individuals who cares deeply about others and about life itself. These past years, we have known her and been enriched by her presence. She's become more than a passing acquaintance or even a quiet classmate. She's become a true friend to us all, one that we cherish dearly. And this is peace. For those of you who are wondering what the word checking means, it is a word Robbie Catapa invented to 
describe Abby's everlasting need to mooch or borrow things from those around her. Through all of this traveling, eating, and checking, Abby still finds time to work at her parents' bed and breakfast or at her dad's campaign for the state senate. And by the way, what about Bob in 96? And this is her piece.
I wish him the best of luck next year, wherever he goes away. But I know that he will do just fine at Bloomberg University. <laughs> To our lives this year at LCDS from Belgium. She came and to go Belgium she will return, leaving behind fond memories for her classmates to savor and reminisce. Laurence does not talk much, but that's probably because we talk a lot and she feels only important stuff is really worth saying. And although I do not know her well enough, I do know she's a good friend, a faithful tutor of French, and a constant in the ever-changing senior room. She's made everyone laugh, and when she laughs, everyone feels a bit better about the day. I know she will succeed at whatever she does next year and in the years to come. Even her piece is artistic, and simply put, so is Laurent's. I would like to introduce you to Susan Cooper. In fact, the verb introduce is not exactly right because I'm sure that everybody knows her. So, I should say that I would like to tell you a little bit more about her, her personality, and what she likes. First off, when you think about Susan, you imagine this huge and conscious mind that she never loses. Even if she's upset about something, she's still enjoying life, her face is still smiling, and that makes her a very nice girl. She's also very smart, a great worker at school, and always worrying about physics tests. Susan is very fashionable and won't ever go to school with something wrong with her clothes, her hair, or her makeup. About clothes, how couldn't she always be perfect because she works at the gap in Park City? In some other words, you could compare Susan to a Barbie. Would you be surprised if I told you that this is what she chose to be on the Halloween day at school? So, how did you want the fifth graders not to be in love with her last year? Susan also has a great passion for the Oriental culture and she was taking the Japan class to learn the culture at school. She is also in the Human Relations Committee and one of the class representatives to the student council. In conclusion, Susan is a very nice and interesting girl and I think she should be proud of herself. And this is her piece.
Maybe that's why he broke the record for the most amount of applications sent, 19. <clears throat> he, he will fit in anywhere. I'm sure Hofstra will enjoy his company as much as we have. Good luck, Lewis. And this is his piece. Well, they thought they could separate the dynamic duo. The Blues Brothers. Well, I say, ha! Not a chance. That's right. I'm here to talk about the other half of my brain. Will Hunt. <laughs> Oh yes, it's gonna hit the fan now. <laughs> when I first sat down to write this, I cranked out a speech, but then I realized everything was either incriminating or inappropriate. <laughs> so I just decided to keep the inappropriate stuff. <laughs> Will and I have been friends forever. As they say, where there's one, there's the other. One of us can start a sentence and the other will finish it. We can have an entire conversation from opposite ends of the room. If you've seen Will walking the illustrious halls of LCDS, you've probably heard him before you saw him. Ah, uh, yes. The halls are alive with the sounds of Will Hunt. He's a joker, a clown, a smooth talker. Ah, I've trained him well. Besides all the good stuff, Will is a great athlete, has a great sense of humor, and is probably the best friend you could ever have. Next year, Will will be off to invade Japan for a year where he'll study abroad and do a little CIA spy work. I plan to visit Will next January to brief him on his next assignment and to raise a little heck. If they thought Godzilla was bad, they ain't seen nothing yet. Will, you've been like a brother to me and many others all these years. Good luck, you'll be missed. And this is his piece. Thank you. <laughs> From biker chick to earthy chick, she's still got me on my knees. And she'll put you on your knees if you're not careful. She's got world dictators and general bad guys on their knees through her ties at Amnesty International has made quite an impression with the latest edition of Impressions, and has aided the AIDS project with donations through jewelry making, which, by the way, is on sale right outside those doors for a special graduation price. And you're welcome, Leo. And if you want a burger, although she'll never know, you can visit her at Friendly's on Columbia Avenue with me, which she is in the process of taking over. It is quite ironic that the biggest feminazi in the school, or so she claims, is going to Lewis, of all people, and Clark next year. Good luck, Leila. You won't need it. Trust me. And this is her piece. Much of our class being lifers, 
Many of us have literally grown up together. It would not be wrong to compare the conflicts of the class of 1994 to the quarrels within the family. Like brothers and sisters, we are often fond of arguing with one another. But when the argument comes from outside of our class, we rally to each other's support. One incident that was exemplary of our class's family-like bond was this year's snow sculpting competition. I deeply apologize for bringing back bad memories to those underclassmen who felt the peltings of cold, compact snow thrown from the hands of the senior class. You see, rather than focusing on creating a superior sculpture, most of the seniors concentrated on eliminating the competition. <laughs> By the end, it was obvious that the battle was won by the seniors. In retribution, the faculty embittered at the fact that they had lost control of this initially innocent outdoor activity to the chaotic rampage of the senior class, overlooked our significant impact on the event. And when the awards were presented, of course, we didn't take the news sitting down. Instead, we addressed it standing up with a chorus of boos and hisses. Now the members of our senior class family are leaving home for a wide open world. But we take along with us many long lasting friendships and unforgettable memories. I can remember five years ago when my brother left for college. He was miles away and I couldn't see him or talk to him as much as I would have liked to. But he never stopped being my brother and as far as I'm concerned, you will all forever be my brothers and sisters and Country A will always be our home. However events progress past this day, it has been a thrill to be a member of the LCDS class of 1994. And we all will always have a second family in our classmates.
Thank you very much, Robbie, for your comments and song, and to all of you for being such a wonderful graduation speaker this morning. Before we begin the awarding of diplomas, I'd just like to recognize Mrs. Becky Groove, who's head of lower school, Mr. Peter Thayer, head of the middle school, who will join me on the podium this morning. Now, to assist with the awarding of diplomas, Mr. Andrew F. Lucarelli, President of the Board of Trustees, and Mrs. Donna Luttrell, head of the upper school. Um, explain, I'll be reading honors at times today, and we have three kinds of honors. Senior honors are give, given for those who have earned honors throughout senior year. Honors um, are for those who have earned honors each year at LCDS, and high honors are for those who have had high honor grades each year at LCDS. Okay, the first one, Nancy on with honors. John Stuart Bingham. <laughs> David M. Bloom. with senior honors. <laughs> Peter Walborn of Corlino. with honors. Sarah Elizabeth Artell. Lewis Arthur Farber. <laughs> Stacy Marie Jagger Rob Gray with senior honors. Jeremiah Wade Harcourt. Andrew Francis Hickel with high honors. William Albert St. George Hunt. John Andrew Johnson with high honors. Laurence Marie Carell.
Michelle Lombardo. Lynn Montgomery. James Paul Molyneux. Emily Serena Rickers with high honors. John Charles Robinson. Our Simran Sachdeva Singh with high honors.
everyone to please remain seated while the seniors and others process out. Let me also invite you to the reception, which will be held out front of the new uh, classroom wing. The seniors will be lined up along the walkway leading to uh, that front reception area. Finally, let me thank you all for coming. It's been great to see you. See you shortly at the reception. Thank you very much. Thank you.